Hey guys, what's up? This is Luna and Fitness here, bringing you another YouTube commentary outlining the different types of defense, like home defense, farm defense, fort defense, bungalow defense, whatever type of defense you want. This can really come in handy if you have one type of resource but not the other, or you just don't have many resources at all. And it's a, a few simpler means than just building a giant wall around your house. And also just ways to improve upon that wall. And also just a few ways, to, uh, if you've been playing the game for a while, just to mess around with and have fun with. So yeah, the first thing we got is Soul Sand. Now as a few of you may not know, but whenever you walk over Soul Sand, it makes it so you walk slower. But there's a way you can improve upon that. And you can put ice underneath the Soul Sand, as you can see here. And it makes you walk a lot slower. This can help keep monsters out of away from your house, or just like stop them from running towards it, or anything like that. So here's an example of that over here. We got soul sand with ice underneath it, with uh, in front of the house over here. Slows down any monsters or approaching enemies. And all right, for the second thing, we have a way to keep out spiders. As you can see, this just looks like a normal fort. But there's a reason that there's a lip overhanging this. Spiders can crawl up walls, but they can't go over this lip right here. This can keep spiders out of your fort and coming in just destroying everything, destroying you especially. And yeah, that can be really bad. So you can still look over the top and shoot enemies out of that and all, all of that. So it helps keeping spiders out. I find it very useful for building walls. Because walls are good against creepers and skeletons and all that, just they seem to be lacking in defense of spiders, except for that. Alright, the third thing we got is netherrack. As a few of you should know, netherrack, whenever you light it with fire, it burns forever. So, this is an example of netherrack burning. This is what it looks like above ground. It's what it looks like below ground. So you can't really see the netherrack very well, but there's just flames coming out of the ground. But this is actually what it looks like underneath the ground. So, an example of using this is surrounding it around your house. Because you always find it really annoying whenever you're just, there's a creeper right outside your door just staring at it and you're afraid to go out. Because <laughs> right when you go out, it's going to blow up your house and that's going to make a really bad day for you. Alright, and the fourth thing we got are guard posts. Or watchtowers or anything like that. See, you can go up into the guard towers and you can shoot mobs and monsters and all that from up above where they can't get to you. Skeletons can get to you, but that's why you want to put a railing or some type of uh, like wood or stone like edge so you can peer over and then back up if they try to shoot back at you and then you can just shoot back at them. It gives you a real advantage over them. So let me just get out of here real quick, patch that up. Oh my god. And we can go on to the fifth thing, which over here is a piston crusher. Whenever you're running away from a mob and you're trying to get in your house or within your walls or something like that, you can just run straight through here and then close that and it crushes any mobs that tries to go through. Comes in handy if getting chased or anything like that. I have that on a few of my walls and things of that nature. The redstone's actually pretty simple. You just put redstone repeaters in front of the pistons to separate where the redstone's going. Redstone goes underground and it just follows underground all over here and it goes underneath the lever so the lever can activate it and it just goes to both sides activating both sides of the thing. And we got our sixth thing over here. The gold, iron golem defense. Whenever mobs see these iron golems, they usually go up and attack them, and the iron golems attack back with a lot of force. And they're really actually effective on taking down mobs, though <laughs> it does require a lot of iron to make them. You have to build iron blocks like this, and then you have to put a pumpkin head on top of it, and it creates an iron golem. They do wander off after a while, so you have to fence them in so they don't go running off wherever they want to go. But it's good for keeping mobs out of a certain area. So, yeah, that brings us to our seventh thing, which is 
the the spencer arrow <laughs> like the arrow turrets whenever a mob walks up near a, a wall or something with these things installed they walk over the pressure plate and they get shot with an arrow it may not be a fast way of killing them but if it's just a prevention just keeping them away from the walls just clearing the area of them after a while if they just hang around the area and keep walking over it they'll eventually die from getting shot from the arrows so much just dispense of that real quick show you the redstone it's pretty simple again you just want to put redstone underneath the pressure plate wire it up to the back of the dispenser make sure the dispenser is loaded with arrows because it'll be bad if it runs out won't be able to do much good if it runs out of arrows so you want to have it loaded like this you can put all four of the things all I mean all the squares you can fill them all up that make it last a lot longer and to the next thing the thing I find the most fun the TNT cannon now it's not very practical but it again it is really fun if you play around with the redstone and all that you can figure out how it works like how long you want to make the TNT go before it explodes so you can shoot it farther and things like that so yeah here it goes as you can see it made a pretty big explosion it does cause a lot of damage though the redstone is actually unharmed because of the water right there that flows into it so basically all you have to do is reload the TNT but TNT is pretty hard to come by in survival if you have the resources though go ahead for it it's very fun to play with and our second to last thing is red is uh, cobblestone and endstone in stone, you can find the end dimension. It's if you have a portal that goes to the end dimension, which is it's actually pretty hard to get. But if you do have one, then this can come in handy. It's 1.5 str times stronger than cobblestone against explosions and things like that. So you can line your walls with it, and it'll help prevent explosions from reaching your house or anything like that. So I'm going to go ahead and set off the TNT on both sides, so you can see the difference. And it may not look like much, but it, there is quite a difference in there. It, the TNT made a much bigger impact with the cobblestone, and the end stone made a much smaller impact. So if you want to save just a few extra blocks, and if you have the resources, go ahead and go for it. It's kind of just a fun thing to put in there. Just a nice touch you can put to your walls. And for the last example I have is the drawbridge with the moat. So you can surround your house with the moat to keep monsters from going into it. And it actually, now that I think about it, it would be better to put lava in there. But lava is a lot harder to come by. But you'd want to put that in front all around your house. And then have a drawbridge in front, which you just can put trapdoors in front of the moat. And as you can see, you can just put them down, put them back up. It's actually really simple, and you just walk across it, and then whenever you're inside the house, just put it back down so the monsters can't follow you, and it keeps your whole island safe. Just make sure, make sure you have your island lit up so then monsters don't actually spawn inside of the island, because that would pretty much defeat the purpose of the moat. And so, if we go over here, we'll find a collection of all of the things I just showed you into one house. This is probably one of the most well-defended houses you're ever going to see in Minecraft. So, observe it. Took a while to build. So, yeah, here we got the soul sand keeping monsters away. We got fire surrounding the whole wall. And then we have arrows shooting, or I mean, we have dispensers shooting arrows at monsters that try to even get close to the firewall. Then we have the piston crusher, which can also be used as a door, too. That comes in handy. Just walk through, crush that, crush any mobs that come through. Then the iron golems on the inner wall, protecting any monsters that could somehow make it through. And then a lip, keeping the spiders out of the inner wall. And finally a drawbridge and a moat going around the inner house. There's a last layer of defense right here, but if this is filled with lava, I could not really see a way a monster could get in here. In fact, I could not see a way a monster could get in here at all with the fire and everything. And then the wall is also lined with endstone in case a creeper somehow comes up and explodes right there. 
And then there is a guard tower, so you can shoot arrows out of right here. You can still shoot them approaching all over the wall. And on top of here, we got a ladder going up to the most fun part of this whole thing, the TNT cannon. And I guess I'm just going to go in and sh uh, set it off to show you. Yeah, and it shoots pretty far. You can load up multiple ones of these. You can load up multiple of these things. Like, you can li line them up all over your wall. You can have them shoot. So it just makes a giant crater all along the wall, destroying anything that's near there. Just, you'd have to find a lot of TNT. That'd be really hard to come by, unless you're, like, a master creeper slayer. So, yeah, that pretty much wraps up everything. If you liked what you saw, like the video, favorite the video, and subscribe if you want to see more. Alright, see ya.